Hello and what's up GSC Pokemon Challenges fam, how you guys doing? We're back. I know some of you were a little stressed out, but it was just April Fools guys when I said that I was gonna stop the series. We got tons of Pokemon still to do. There's no way we're stopping the Bugsy Minimum Battle series. And we can see our results so far. So far, 38 Pokemon have managed to beat Bugsy and Rival 2 on Minimum Battles. We have failed in this section with 16 Pokemon up to this point. We have also tested a couple of our Pokemon that are, of course, in the uh, members picks section. Uh, there's no Vulpix showing there, but Vulpix was a member pick. It did have to end up getting through the Rival 2 fight with Hypnosis. Bulbasaur has also completed this section. It had Ancient Power, perfectly fine. But today we're going to get a couple more member picks coming in. We're going to have the Psyduck and the Wooper getting in on the action in this one because we can see the team that we got for our challengers today. 18 Pokemon are still legitimately in the running, plus those two member picks. We have, of course, Golbat and Crobat. We've got Vileplume, Venomoth. We've got Dugtrio. I think that uh, Tri-Attack with Dugtrio is going to just wreck here, but we'll see. Persian is in. We have, of course, our Golduck, so that's why we have to run the Psyduck. Primeape. We've got Growlithe. You'll notice Arcanine is not there because Arcanine already was the first Pokemon that we tested this section with. I don't know. Should we test out Whitney with Arcanine? I don't know. I might just do it, guys. We'll see. Anyway, then we've got, of course, the entire Mareep line. We've got Blossom. We've got Azumarill. We've got Pseudo Wudo. We've got Jumpluff. We've got Apem. We've got Quagsire, thus we're also going to get that Wooper in. These are uh, just very diverse set of Pokemon, and I mentioned it last time, but basically as we get deeper and deeper into this series, I think the unevolved forms are slowly going to fall off, and more and more it's just going to be mid-stages and final evolutions and Pokemon that don't evolve, and then as we keep going, we're just going to whittle them down, whittle them down until we get to the best of the best. So here's how we're going to go today. We're going to start off with the Crobat Golbat, of course. I think it's just standard. Then we're going to get into the grass types. We have, of course, our Vileplume, but we've also got Blossom and Jumpluff. So they make a nice little set to just compare. We can then get into just, you know, some randos again. We're going to take on that uh, Venomoth and that Dugtrio. But then I think we've got another pretty good, you know, set of Pokemon coming up. The Golduck the Azumarill, and really the Quagsire. They all just kind of fit in together in a nice way. Then, of course, we'll just come up and mop up the rest with that Primeape, with that Growlithe, with that Apem. I think it'll be interesting. Uh, Pseudo Wudo might just completely wreck here. We'll just have to find out. Anyway, we're going to start off with that Crobat. Tons of challengers. This might be a super long video, but we're just going to have to go with it. Let's see how it goes. So first things first, we're going to lead off with the legendary Crobat. We're going to role play as Koga here. We're going to be like, yes, I am Koga. And of course, we're just going to pick everything up right on Faulkner, where we just already won. We can see that our Crobat is looking pretty nice. Screech, Leaf, Life, and Super Sonic was the move set. The real question is, do we get any useful moves? Here we can see that Crobat is actually one of the best Pokemon in Gen 2. It's ranked 20th in terms of base stats with 535 total. That 130 speed is massive, but still it's got decent attack, decent defense, decent special defense, decent HP. Special attack's a little bit lower, but still not too bad. We're going to get Bite at level 12, which will be huge. And we can also learn Swift in this section. Now, I got to say, I always found it very interesting that they gave an evolution to Zubat in Gen 2, like, you know, an additional evolution. And, you know, it's one of the first Pokemon that evolves via friendship. It just never made a whole lot of sense to me. I mean, it's a cool design, though. Like, definitely Crobat has one of the cooler designs in Gen 2 of all the Pokemon. I guess it's just because they wanted to promote Koga and they wanted him to have a better ace. So we have reached Azalea Town with our Crobat. And this might be one of those rare Pokemon that I don't even wait and just immediately slap the Swift TM onto. Because our only attacking move right now is Leech Life as far as direct damaging moves. And that just might not be strong enough to get through this. I'm going to try one time with this setup, but then we may just end up going Pink Bow plus 
a little bit of that uh, swift action. So here we can confuse our opponents to get them to deal more damage to themselves, and we can even use Screech strats here so that if they do hit themselves in confusion, they do more damage. But I don't know, I guess our Leech Life is doing pretty decently here. Let's go ahead and just confuse this one too. There, we finally land the Supersonic, and we're going to Screech at this one at least once. And then uh, let's just try to knock it out. Well, there we go. So turns out that we didn't actually need to worry too much about the Swift right there. So here we go. We have made it to Bugsy. Let's check the tail of the tape as we come in with our Crobat. We are level 13 with 49 HP. Screech, Leech Life, Supersonic, and Bite is the moveset. We've got 33 attack, 30 defense, 27 special attack, 30 special defense, 43 speed. I don't know, guys. I might have to go back and restart this if I fail because uh, I might need that Swift. But let's just see. So here, Bugsy attempt number one. I'm going to start by confusing him. I think this is the way to go. Let's just also give him the screeches because we can. And, uh, you know, he can set up Harden if he wants. We're going to do more damage thanks to our screeches. And we can just heal up right off of that Pokemon. So out comes the Scyther. We are faster than Scyther. And we can now screech at this one. We can confuse it. He's going for Fury Cutter. I'm going to bite him to like the whole idea behind biting him while he's using Fury Cutter is to try to get him to flinch and he knocks us out on the first attempt. OK, here we're just going for the supersonic here. We're going to screech at him. You might think that screech makes no sense, but I mean, obviously it makes no sense there because he knocks us out. The reason screech makes sense is because if he hits himself in confusion, his own defense stat is used against him. So if he's hitting himself with a lower defense stat, he'll do a lot more damage to himself. Okay, here he sends out Kakuna. Not sure how he's making that decision, but here we are getting him to just do a lot of damage to himself. So there we can reconfuse him. Let's go Leech Life. Yes, like even though it's not great, it's it's doing decent damage here due to the defense drops. So that one goes down. Now out comes the Scyther again. Let's confuse this guy. Come on. Come on. There he finally gets confused. And there he hits himself in confusion twice. Here, let's keep this guy confused. Okay, and there we just bite him. And there we finally win and get to level 15. So that took a few attempts. Like I said, it might have been better if we had had Swift. So here, let's get into the Rival 2 fight. The real boss of this section. Let's just see. So here for Rival 2, of course, on the Ghastly, I'm just going to bite it. And that is a one hit KO. Very nice. Out comes the Zubat. I'm going to confuse this Zubat and he confuses me instead. But OK, we, we trade confusion here. Um, we're going to outbite him <laughs> and get the flinch. And uh, here we just have to manage to hit. There we go. So we get through. We're to Quill Lava, where we're going to use Supersonic. I chose Quill Lava in the beginning because of the fact that it's, you know, resistant to our leech life. But here we're just going to knock it out just like that. Oh, look at that. Just two screeches and having it hit itself in confusion was enough. And there we've got it. So uh, Crobat gets through. Not really that bad. I think we can see a pretty clear strategy that will get the Golbat through as well. Again, I don't think necessarily that we want to forget any of our moves, though we could forget Leech Life. Maybe that's the one to go and instead to put Swift over that move. Anyway, here we can save the game, and uh, there we've got it. Crobat joins the winner's column. So now it's Golbat's turn, and it's basically the same position. It should have the same moveset. The real difference here is just that we're not going to necessarily have as much power. So we're really just going to have to see if we're survivable enough to get through this next section with some confusion and defense dropping strats and probably with Swift over Leech Life. So coming into Azalea Town, the biggest thing is just if we'll need the Swift TM immediately or if we can make some progress without it. So again, we're just going to come down here. We're going to say, what's up, Kurt? How you doing, brother? How you doing, brother? And we're just going to get into these fights. So here, let's just save the game really quickly because I'm not sure we're going to beat these rockets, but let's find out. 
So here against the first rocket member, we're simply going to try to follow the same strategy effectively that we did with our Crobat. I think we're taking a little bit more damage here, but if we can get them to hit themselves in confusion, this should be fine. In fact, we can just easily knock that one out. Cool. And let's just go supersonic here. And now we will screech at this one. Kind of want to just take some damage off of it too. And there we go. So we do get through the first trainer. That wasn't really too bad. But these ones do look a little bit close. So I am a little nervous. We might even want to just add on a berry here to be safe. So here we can save the game and let's get into this Bugsy fight where we can just check the stats so far. We are coming in at level 13 with 47 HP. We know Screech, Leech Life, Supersonic, and Bite. We've got a Berry on, and we have 30 attack, 28 defense, 26 special attack, 29 special defense, and 33 speed. So here at Bugsy attempt number one. I'm going to lead off with Supersonic. I think this is the best play. And then we're just kind of hoping to Screech at this Pokemon. Oh, and he immediately snaps out of confusion too. Ooh, this is just going terribly up to this point. He finally hits himself in confusion there, but we kind of want to get all the screeches set up and now I'm kind of hoping to heal up some damage off of him. So we do heal up a little bit there. Out comes the Scyther though. It goes Fury Cutter and Fury Cutter again. Now we have confused it as it missed a Fury Cutter. We're going to screech at it a bunch. We're kind of hoping that he hits himself in confusion here and he snaps out of confusion. So we kind of need some luck here. He hits himself in confusion there. We do knock him out. And now, I mean, Kakuna, the good news is that it can't really damage us. So I'm going to screech at it once at least. And now just try to go into the leech lives because it's only doing one damage and we're definitely healing more damage than that every turn. So this is now a guaranteed win. Very nice. So Golbat, it's not super pretty, but it does get through Bugsy on minimum battles and it gets to level 15. Now the question is, how do we do against our rival? We obviously have bite for the ghastly. We can also bite on the quill lava, which is very good. The enemy Zubat should not be terrible, but it just kind of depends on luck. So let's see how this one goes. So here, rival two attempt number one. Of course, we're going to bite right away. Oh, he withdraws his first Pokemon. That was very interesting. Why did he swap? OK, here we do confuse the Quillava at last. I'm just going to stick with the bites here. Just try to take this one down quick. Out comes the Ghastly again, which we will bite in one shot. And here against the Zubat, I'm going to try to confuse it first, just because I'm hoping to avoid some hits if I can. And there we go. No, we get through Rival 2 on the first attempt. Are you kidding me? That was not bad at all with this Golbat. Golbat is kind of legit, guys. Now, don't get me wrong. It might just hit a wall on Whitney here because those rollouts could be scary. But then again, it might just be a matter of some some confusion luck. I'm not sure. This is going to be very interesting in this next section. And just like that, Golbat and Crobat continue in this challenge. You know, two Pokemon that weren't great in Gen 1, but hey, two gems down for them in Gen 2. That is pretty legit, if I do say so myself. So now let's get into some Pokemon that might not do very good on this section. We have, of course, Vileplume, we've got Blossom, and we've got Jumpluff. Three grass types, we're just going to run them. And uh, let's just start off with that jump bluff since it does have the advantage of being a grass flying type, so it won't be as affected by bug type moves. Maybe it's going to be the best of the three. Let's just find out. So the biggest thing that jump bluff has going for it, of course, is that it learns synthesis. But I'm not sure if we learn any moves that can hit ghosts. Let's check this. So in this next section, we may get poison powder and stun spore, but then we are not looking like we're going to learn anything that can hit ghosts in this section. And that could be a major, major problem. We don't really have stats, guys. This could turn out to be bad, especially because we've got like splash and tail whip on our moveset. Oh, this could be terrible. So I think we're definitely going to have to try to use healing on him here. We're probably going to need some poison cure berries. But I'm not sure we have an answer for Rival 2's Ghastly. 
So here we've made it to Azalea, but this could be the first Pokemon that really struggles in Slowpoke well, because we just can't get any better moves. Like, I'm pretty sure we don't learn Mudslap. Yeah, that ain't happening, and Swift ain't happening. So we just have to use Tackle and Synthesis and Tail Whip to get through this. So here, let's try against the first trainer. I'm going to give him at least one Tail Whip, and then we'll go into our Tackles here. We are doing, doing decent damage, at least, so... That is a little bit reassuring. We are also in the medium slow level up group, so we level up a little faster here. So we can get through those first trainers just like that. So we do get through the first three rockets, but I need to heal and make sure I get lots of synthesis PP before I take on James Jr. because uh, this guy could wreck us with some smog strats. Let's just see. So first attempt here, I'm going to tail whip him first and Smog does 10 damage. And it has a decent chance to poison. He gets the poison there. I'm going to just heal right here. He misses that Smog. We're gonna start tackling. He misses another Smog. He's only gonna use this one move against us. So that is the big advantage. And we do seem to be surviving and getting through. So very nice. Level 14 comes in. Our faster level up rate, plus the fact that we uh, were able to at least you know, survive there using synthesis, got us through. But now we have to come over here into Bugsy's gym. And I'm not sure how this is gonna go. So here I'm gonna learn Stun Spore over Poison Powder just because it has the ability to paralyze my opponent. That could be helpful in some situations. So here we have made it to Bugsy and you might say, well, why would you wanna fight him? I think it's just because we don't have anything to hit the Ghastly on Rival 2. So let's just check the stats before we go into this fight here. We are coming in at level 15 with 52 HP. We have Tackle, Synthesis, Tail Whip, and Stun Spore as our moveset. The Barry is on so that hopefully we're a little more survivable here. And we've got 27 attack, 31 defense, 26 special attack, 35 special defense, and 43 speed. Basically, we're fast. Let's see if that's enough. So here it is, Bugsy attempt number one. I'm going to start off by paralyzing him and let's go for the tail whips here just so that hopefully we can deal more damage and it looks to be a three hitter there on the metapod at that point. So now we can paralyze the Kakuna. Goes poison sting on us. The big thing here is that we can heal in battle because we've got synthesis and we also had the Baryon. So before we knock this one out, I'm actually going to heal up quite a bit. And let's just get close to full health at least. And we can knock that one out. Cool. Now, Scyther, I definitely think we need a stun spore it. So let's get the stun spore right there. Let's go for the tail whip. And I think we need synthesis here. And we're going to try to get back to basically full health. And now let's tackle him. We're kind of hoping that he like misses a turn here. Yes. Nice. Nice turn of him being fully paralyzed. He goes Leer there, Tackle there, and we get knocked out by the Poison. So it was very close. A critical hit would have gotten us through there. But man, that was close, close. So here we're going to get through without the Poison. That's huge. Because now we can go Stun Spore right here. We can Tail Whip. He went for Quick Attack after we uh, paralyzed him. I'm going to go Synthesis here just to make sure that I have more health and now go into the attacks. He's fully paralyzed there, he's fully paralyzed there, and we take him down, yes. And now we do get to learn Sleep Powder. Okay, so this might be a spot where, really, I mean, we don't have anything great here for the rival. I'm gonna learn Sleep Powder over Stun Spore, of course. So uh, here we go. Let's uh, manipulate things, because we can say very clearly that when we go into this fight, our only attacking move is tackle like our only damaging move is tackle so there's no way that we get through this fight normally now what we can do is give ourselves a berry so that we can heal in battle via the held item and then we're gonna just take away all of our pp except one pp i think in sleep powder so here let's try this once where obviously the first thing we're gonna do is try to put this one to sleep just so that it doesn't damage us and now struggle with a critical hit does one shot there out comes the Quill Lava, and we're really not doing much damage here. We are going to get a heal once with a berry, but 
with him doing super effective damage, I just do not see a way that we get through this. This is terrible, truly terrible. And now we're looking like a four hitter. He goes for smoke screen inexplicably. So we actually get through Quillava this time and level up to level 18. We did decent damage. He goes bite and he just knocks us out with the bite. If we had just done a little more damage, we would have gotten through that time. Why does he go smoke screen sometimes? That makes no sense to me. So yeah, I think we can call it right there and say that jump bluff, even with struggle strats, just doesn't get through. It had one run where it looked so close, but in the end, it just does not work. And it all comes down to the fact that it doesn't have a move to hit the first ghost Pokemon. If you can't take out the Ghastly without using up all your PP and going into struggle, if one of the other Pokemon has a super effective move against you, I think you're just dead in this fight. It's very different from earlier on where, you know, maybe you can get through two Pokemon with the right luck with struggle strats. Three Pokemon is a big ask though. So we're just gonna have to eliminate Jump Pluff right there. It was fun while it lasted. With that, let's move on to Blossom. So here we are with our Blossom, starting the game with Pebble Dance and Absorb. Those might be enough to get through this next section, but I'm not super confident. We have to add on to that that we're not going to learn any TMs in this section, so if we get walled at, like, Bugsy, there's really nothing that we can do. One very last-ditch possibility is that if we could find a way to get through Rival 2 somehow, we could get Cut. Cut isn't necessarily going to be great by any means, but it could, in theory at least, allow us to progress. That being said, I guess we're just going to have to come in and hula dance. I'm willing to bet that we probably need some berries here if we're going to get through this. Now, this first Rocky Grunt shouldn't be too bad since we can just go pedal dance and it's going to be at least neutral effective. So it looks like we're just one shotting these Pokemon. So that's very easy, but up next we have to take on a Zubat, which is four times resistant to our grass moves. This could be rough. So here up against Jesse Jr., let's just see. We're going to start with the Stun Spore. Leech Life is super effective, though it does basically no damage. We can absorb in revenge, but we can see we did like one damage there. So clearly we have to go Petal Dance, even if we do end up getting confused here. It's just the best way for us to deal damage against these opponents, but then we get confused. We could use Bitter Berries to try to avoid the confusion on ourselves, but that's pretty much it. So we do manage to get through the first Zubat, still confused as we come here against this Ekans. Fortunately, it's only one times resistant to our moves, but Poison Sting is super effective. So we're getting taken down right there with the berry. All right, so here we have made it. We're level 15 right now with our Blossom and we have to make a decision. Do we try to fight Rival 2? In which case we can get the Cut HM or do we just try to go and fight Bugsy? Now I think Rival 2 is the logical answer because even though he is technically harder in a lot of ways, we at least are only four times resisted by the Zubat that doesn't have great special. Whereas when we go into Bugsy, he's going to four times resist us with the Kakuna and with the Scyther. And both of those are going to be really hard to knock out. So let's just see if this is even possible. We might have to manipulate things to get into some struggle strats somehow. But let's just try it. So here, let's try giving a berry once just to be safe. Let's just see. So here we go. Let's try this one again. We're going to Stun Spore there. Now let's go into the Petal Dance. We're going to get a nice two hit KO on the Ghastly. Very good. We level up to level 16 right there. Still using Petal Dance at this point. But now let's go for the Paralysis. We hit ourselves in confusion, unfortunately. So we're going to have to paralyze it there. There we go. Now we can at least deal some damage. And I mean, our main advantage is that we do have good special defense. We get one more leech life there that we heal up with the berry and we can knock out Zubat. Now out comes Quill Lava. It goes for the smoke screen first and we miss and it smoke screens again. But we are at least doing decent damage, but it's just a two hitter from there to knock us out. Now, the question is, 
Should we go for some sort of like struggle strat there? But before we try that, let's just try Bugsy once. Let's just see the situation for sure as we come into this gym fight. So here Bugsy attempt number one. We're going to just go straight into pedal dance here on the Metapod. It looks like a three hit. Oh, we got a two hit range there. Very nice. Out comes Kakuna. I'm going to go for Stun Spore here just because I want to prevent it from using as many of its uh, poison stings on me. Fortunately, Harden doesn't matter. Here we get to the KO right there, and now we definitely need to paralyze this Scyther, but we can see that we did four damage there with the Petal Dance, and it has 50 HP, so that is a 13 hit KO with Petal Dance. I'm not sure there's any way that we're ever getting that many hits on this Pokemon before we just get knocked out. So that raises the strategy that could be to use some struggle strats here and to try in some way to get through this. So, so I'm going to leave myself with one PP in the move Petal Dance, just because that should enable us to get through the very first ghastly and then we're gonna just try to struggle here we're gonna replace the miracle seed of course with a berry so let's just get that done so there we go we've got the berry on let's just see if we can get through now so here is rival two and we're going to go straight for the pedal dance so this should just be a two hitter there so we knock that one out get to level 16 we're confused but i mean that is what it is Oh, the confusion is just bad here. We're just getting really bad luck with confusion. It looks like this is probably a three hitter on the Zubat once we get to struggle. So we do knock that one out. Quill Lava comes out and it's just going to knock us out there. But that was kind of bad luck. Like if we can just immediately snap out of confusion. Okay, here we get a Leer from Quill Lava. And now we get a heal up right there. Goes Ember, but we're just going to knock ourselves out with Recoil. It's really close. So uh, yeah, that one just doesn't work. Let's now go into the Bugsy fight and try a similar strategy because maybe just gaining one or two levels makes that rival possible with the struggle strats. So here for Bugsy round two, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to start off with the pedal dance on this Metapod, just trying to knock it out quickly. That way we can just get through that first Pokemon. We get to level 16. And now we're just going to try to use conf or try to use struggle strats here. We are getting poison stung and we did have to use the berry there as we get poisoned as well. So Fury Cutter hits and we can see that did nine damage to the Scyther. So there it's more like a six hit KO. So really not that great. So Blossom hits a wall at Rival 2 and at Bugsy, and I just don't see any way through this. If we had the move Sleep Powder instead of Stun Spore, I would say that this is absolutely possible. But it's the fact that we're just stuck with Stun Spore. Sweet Scent doesn't really do anything for us here. We're just not getting through these two fights. So unfortunately, Blossom has to join the fail column, and that's just too bad. But we kind of knew these grass types would struggle here. But man, Gen 2 really hates grass. It's time to see if Vileplume can pull one out for the team though, and maybe progress in this run. So unfortunately, Vileplume has the exact same moveset, so I just don't see any real way that we're gonna get through this. I could be surprised, but I'm be I'm just willing to bet we're getting wrecked here. <laughs> Now, interestingly enough, these rockets are seeming a lot easier, relatively speaking, just because of the fact that we're not actually weak to their moves. So I don't know, we might actually have a shot in this one. So here we've made it to James Jr. And as long as we can just deal decent damage with Petal Dance, I think we'll get through this just fine. He's going tackle rather than smog since really, I mean, both of his moves probably do about the same amount of damage here. So as long as he just doesn't land any crazy crits or anything, we should get through that. Very nice. So we'll just take the free heal from Kurt. You know, he's going to thank us for saving some uh, slow pokes down there. And now we're just going to go into Bugsy's gym. Let's just beat up on the easy trainers first and then make our way to the gym later. So here we are. We've made it right in front of Bugsy. We are at level 15 with Vileplume, 52 HP. We know Absorb, Sweet Scent, Stun Spore, and Petal Dance. 
We're coming in with 34 attack, 35 defense, 40 special attack, 37 special defense, and only 25 in speed. That is our big weakness. But maybe with the paralysis, it doesn't matter. I'm going to give the berry here. I think this is the best strat, but let's just see if it works out. So here, Bugsy attempt to number one. We're going to just lead off first, I think, with... Well, let's just see. What does Absorb do? Absorb does seven damage. So that makes that a six hit KO here. And he goes Harden, but maybe we can just heal back the damage that he does with Tackle? We can. So there's no reason to waste our time doing Petal Dance and maybe hitting ourselves in confusion there. So we can get through that. I'm going to now Stun Spore here on Kakuna. I'm just kind of interested to see, like Absorb is doing like three damage here. He's doing like two damage per hit to us. But I mean, if he's paralyzed sometimes, we may just be able to mostly heal back the damage that he does. And if so, then, you know, this is basically fine. Like we don't even need yet again to go for something like Petal Dance that can confuse us. We get a nice crit there. And there we go. We're going to get through the Kakuna basically on full health, still with the berry intact. So now we're going to Stun Spore on the Scyther, which is trying to use Fury Cutter. And now is the spot where I think we go Petal Dance, basically just hoping to deal as much damage as possible. Now, we're only doing about five damage per hit, making this a 10 hit KO range here. Looks like five to six damage each time we hit him. But this could be a spot now where like some, some sort of like, you know, struggle strat or something comes in and we can get through that Pokemon. So before we go struggle strats, let's go and just check out Rival 2. Let's just see how he looks. Maybe we can make this one work. So here we are, Rival 2 attempt number one. I'm going to lead off with the Petal Dance here. Oh, he goes straight for Quill Lava. He goes for Smoke Screen. And now, okay, he did like 18 damage there. So we're gonna heal up right here with the berry, but we do manage to knock out Quill Lava, okay. So out comes the Ghastly, and this is just like a two-hitter here. Then we hit ourselves in confusion though, so we lose that fight. But I'm just saying, this could be a weird spot where like some... some good paralysis luck and just good strategy allows us to get through. I'm gonna reset whenever I get put to sleep though, because I think that's just not the luck we need. So this time we got a critical hit on Quillava, and it is paralyzed here, but we just can't quite get the damage. It still had one HP remaining. We couldn't knock it out. So here I think we again have to go for struggle strats. Like even when we're getting pretty good luck, we're just not quite getting it. But I think the difference is that struggle will get us through in this one. So I'm going to go with a little bit of a weird strategy here. I'm going to come in with all of the absorbs and just a couple PP in the move Stun Spore. And I'm gonna try Bugsy again, because if we can level up here against Bugsy, we might just have a better chance against the rival. The whole idea here is that we saw already that we weren't taking that much damage from the Metapod or the Kakuna. So we should just be able to use Absorb on them over and over and over again after paralyzing them, and then have one more of our Stun Spores left for the final opponent of course which is scyther and if we can just get enough damage with the struggles this might just work so this time we are going to get through and still have a couple of pp left and absorb but let's just see here we're going for the stun spore first we get it now he goes quick attack and we just need him to be fully paralyzed for at least a turn there we go he's paralyzed that turn we heal up here he quick attacks but one more hit and there we go Struggle strats were required, but we did get through Bugsy with a Vile Plume. And that means that we've gained at least a couple extra levels there. And that might be enough to be able to get through the rival. Let's just see if it makes any difference here. We might still have to struggle on the rival too, but let's just find out. So here, rival two attempt like number three or four or five. I'm not sure anymore. But here we obviously just pedal dance on the Ghastly. He uses Spite. I think that's fine. We don't care. Out comes Quill Lava. Oh, I went uh, pedal dance here by mistake. But let's see. We did 13 damage there. So this is a four hit KO on the Quill Lava now. 
And really the issue here is that once we get to that Quilava, we basically have to take like no hits from it in order to have any shot of getting through this fight. Don't get me wrong, this one will go eventually because eventually you get a run where you never hit yourself in confusion after using Petal Dance. You get the paralysis on the Quilava and it never moves after getting paralyzed, which means that you have enough HP that you can just heal up and uh, then finish this fight. But the way that it's going right now, it's pretty clear that that's highly unlikely. And there we can see Vile Plume is joining a lot of Pokemon in the fail column. So that is what it is. But uh, now it's time to test some others. Let's start off with the Venomoth. Venomoth is also quite interesting here because it's not going to have anything great against Quillava, but it might just be good otherwise. But let's find out. So here, of course, we can see that our Venomoth just has the moves Tackle, Disable, Foresight, and Supersonic. Not sure how these are going to perform. Now, it does look like we might be able to get to Confusion at level 17, but otherwise, I'm not sure if we're going to get enough moves to get through this. We do get Swift, however, and that could be our saving grace. So Kurt's going to run away and fall into a well because he doesn't know the typing of this Pokemon. I'm pretty sure it's a Psychic Dragon, but you know, that does mean that it's going to have a little bit of trouble in this section. Perhaps we'll just have to see here. We can always go with berries here. I think that's probably the best route to start off. So first, let's try to beat up some rockets and see if we can make it through this section. So overall, a fair bit of inconsistency here against these rockets. We've had a few resets, but it just comes down to whether or not we hit the supersonics and get decent accuracy and confusion luck or not. We can see just missing every single supersonic here. But otherwise, I think we can eventually get through these fights. Here we're starting to get better luck, so uh, now we might just win in spite of the fact that this started really terrible. So it's just kind of random, but you can get through this whole section on minimum battles with a Venomoth within just a couple of resets. So now let's just make our way into Bugsy's gym, get some easy XP, and I think we're going to take on Bugsy first in this one. So here standing in front of Bugsy with our Venomoth, we're coming in at level 13 with 46 HP. We know Tackle, Disable, Foresight, and Supersonic. We can always learn Swift if we want to, but we're going to avoid that just for now. We're coming in with 26 attack, 25 defense, 33 special attack, 29 special defense, and 33 speed. I'm just going to slap a berry on first. Let's just try it with this setup and see if we can beat Bugsy on the first attempt. So here against Bugsy, I think the best strategy is to try to confuse his Pokemon just so that they have a chance to hit themselves. And now we're going to just go for the tackles here and just try to whittle these ones down. We don't have any way to heal damage here, so we're not going to be quite as good as far as HP later on in the fight. But I think we can get through these ones just fine. So here we're just going to confuse the Kakuna. Fortunately, we cannot be poisoned. So we just want good confusion luck here, basically, so that we don't have to end up using our berry and we can get through this Pokemon on the Scyther. Scyther is out last. We're going to, of course, confuse it. And I think we're going to... Try to disable whatever it uses next. Oh, we disabled Fury Cutter Rip because he was fully paralyzed that turn. But we do heal with a berry. He hits himself in confusion. And we just need one more hit. There we go. We beat him on the first attempt and get to level 15. We did not need to use Swift to get through that fight. That's pretty nice. So here now let's save the game and let's just see how we do against the rival here. Now, I want to test this. Foresight, what does it do? So Foresight allows Tackle to hit a Ghastly. So what that means is that it's just a three hit KO there and we get through that first Pokemon. Now, of course, Ember just wrecks us there, but we didn't heal. But I was just testing that out. And yes, Foresight allows us to hit the Ghastly. So we do have a way to get through this fight just using something like Swift or using something like Tackle even. Let's just see. So here, let's call this our first real attempt against the rival. We're going to start off by using Supersonic on his Ghastly. He licks us. That was bad. <laughs> That's not what we wanted. I'm going to reset. So here we get through the Ghastly. We're going to confuse the Quilava. And let's just see 
we can disable Ember. So now it cannot use Ember against us for at least quite a few turns. We're going to try to reconfuse this one. Oh, we didn't have a berry on. Okay, let's try this again with the berry equipped. So here he withdrew his Ghastly and put out the Quillava, but that should mean that we can simply do that and... Okay, it uses smoke screen, so we're just going to use Foresight here and now just tackle him. And he goes Ember there. And now we want to disable Ember, if at all possible. And we just miss the disables. Okay. So disable is 55% to hit. And fortunately in Gen 2, it's just based on the last move your opponent used. So it's much better than it was in Gen 1. Gen 1 disable was absolute trash. But here we can use it to get through this fight. So there we go. We knock out the Ghastly. We're going to confuse the Quillava. And as soon as it actually uses a, an Ember on us, we're going to just take advantage of being able to use Disable. Okay. And we miss Disable there. We hit Disable now. Here we're going to use Foresight to avoid any accuracy strats here. And we just cannot get the... Confusion. We're just missing too much with these inaccurate moves. So here we're going to teach Swift over tackle. It's just going to give us a little bit more damage output. And let's see if that improves things at all. So here we confuse Kulava and it hits itself in confusion. We can use Swift, which does seem to be getting a better range here. I'm going to try to disable Ember still. So there Ember is disabled. And this appears to be a three hitter from there. So we knock that Pokemon out. Let's see what the range is here on Zubat. It is looking to be a two hit range here. If we just got it to hit itself in confusion there. Or sorry, it's looking to be a three hit range there. But if we got it to hit itself in confusion there, we would have knocked it out. Here I'm just going to go in on the Swifts. Because who cares if he's smoke screening if we can use Swift. So now we should just be able to go Swift here on the Zubat. It's a three hitter. But there we go. Venomoth gets through. Was it good? Not really. We had a lot of resets on that Rival 2 fight, but it is ultimately possible to beat Rival 2 and Bugsy with a Venomoth on minimum battles. It does need to use the Swift TM to have a decent chance of getting through. You're going for the situation where you're trying to actually disable the move um, Ember on that Quillava, but once you get it to go, once you get that right combination of Confusion and Disable and using Foresight to hit the Ghastly with normal type moves, it is possible to get through that fight. So uh, that's pretty cool. Hey, Venomoth, good work. So coming back to our progress, we have just added Venomoth to the pass column. 41 pass, 19 fail. We're starting to get a lot more fails in this section though. We just have to see if that keeps up or not. But next up, we've got a Pokemon that I think is going to pass pretty darn easily. It's time for Dugtrio. And we've been kind of struggling up to this point in these runs, so I'm ready for a really easy one. So I've talked about it a ton on my Gen 1 channel, but Dugtrio was one of my favorite Pokemon as a kid. You know, I know it's based on Whack-A-Mole and all this and all that. I just loved that the Pokemon was super fast. And you could get it just before you fought Lieutenant Surge from the Diglett Cave and just completely destroy him, like literally one shot his Pokemon. So I thought this Pokemon was great. It was one of the best early game Pokemon that you could get. I basically consider everything until you get to Celadon City and Pokemon Red and Blue to be the early game. And uh, yeah, there are tons of challenges that you can do with like, if you were doing a Nuzlocke and you somehow managed to get your hands on this Pokemon and Pokemon Red, Blue, Yellow, you'd just be like, oh my God, this is amazing. So uh, yeah, <laughs> it's just a great Pokemon, especially for full game solo runs until you get to the late game of Pokemon red, blue, and yellow, and then it kind of gets wrecked at the Elite Four. But up to that point, it's actually a pretty solid choice. I am also very excited here in Gen 2 because of the fact that we get access to Tri-Attack. Obviously, we can learn other TMs here because, like, Mud Slap would obviously just immediately be thrown on this Pokemon if you wanted to. Obviously, Swift is going to be a thing here. But let's just see if we can get through with our already pretty OP moveset. 
So here, Kurt's going to show us how to go down in a hole with our Doug Trio. But we're just going to say, thanks, Kurt. Get up here and fight these rockets. So finally, to James Jr. We just really haven't had any trouble in this section at all. Magnitude is super effective here. It's just kind of a weird move since it does variable amounts of damage, but we'll definitely replace it later on. Something like Earthquake would clearly be much better. But for now, I think it will get the job done. Now, this is the point where we got to remember that a Ghastly does not have Levitate, so it kind of makes sense to just go and fight Rival 2. Let's see how this goes. So here, Rival 2 attempt number one, we're just going to go Magnitude here and just one-shot Ghastly. Out comes the Croconaw, and this might be the spot where we're just hoping for some sort of ridiculous status. Here, this time we got the burn, which is probably not what we wanted. Obviously, the freeze would be amazing. But let's just try this a couple more times. So never mind, I forgot to come in here and fight these trainers. So I'm going to come in and fight them first just to get the easy XP. And then we'll go back and take that one on. So here, after fighting everything that we can here in Bugsy's gym, let's just check the stats. We're coming in at level 13 with 36 HP. That's the big problem of this Pokemon. It just doesn't have HP. But here we've got Tri Attack, Scratch, Growl, and Magnitude. We're holding a berry. We've got 30 attack, 22 defense, 22 special attack, 27 special defense, and 41 speed. Let's see how this goes against Bugsy on the first attempt. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to lead off by just going try attack on the Metapod. I think this is perfectly fine. And we just get the three hit KO here. I'm actually going to try magnitude here on the Kakuna since it is at least neutrally effective due to its dual typing. We should just be able to get through that. It took four hits, but that was fine. Now, finally, we're here on the Scyther. We outspeed and we burn it. So the burn is actually very helpful here because it lowers its attack and we get through just like that and get to level 15. Now the question is, can we find a way to get through Rival 2? The Crocona is the actual real boss here. I know a lot of people wanted me to put this one up against the Bayleaf. Also could be really, really tough. If we can't get through Crocona, we definitely don't get through Bayleaf. But let's just see if this is even possible. So here we are, Rival 2, next attempt after we've gotten all the levels that we can. Obviously, Magnitude's more than enough for Ghastly. Out comes Crocona. We're going to go try attack and... We'd probably be in the same boat whether we were up against the Bayleaf or here against the Croconaw, where we're just really hoping and praying to get a status. But here we get a burn. He goes for Leer, and he's burned, so we actually get through Croconaw this time on the Zubat. Here we can just go ahead and get the two-hitter, and it works out. But this is the point. Like, yes, technically we could argue that the Bayleaf would be tougher here definitely because that razor leaf especially if it crits is just gonna i think one shot us but we're always going to be faster always this pokemon is super super fast so we would always have the chance to use at least one try attack and in that case the entire point use the try attack or you could also get paralysis and maybe it works but you're really just praying for the freeze. And once you get that on that Bayleaf, I think you just get through. And then it's not like Zubat can do anything against you. So you pretty easily win. So is it luck based? Yeah, certainly. But it is possible. <laughs> and possible is what we're aiming for here. At least within a few resets. And we definitely got that on this one. So Doug Trio gets through. Let's move on to Persian next. All right, so now Persian is ready to come into this and we already have the move Bite, which is very fortunate because that means we have a way to hit ghosts pretty easily. So we should be able to get through this next section without too much difficulty. Obviously, normal types have the massive advantage that they don't have any type weaknesses in this section. We don't have to deal with any sort of steel types, rock types, don't have to deal with anything using fighting moves against us. So this should be possible, but let's just see whether or not it works out. Now, fortunately, we do have Mud Slap and Swift available here if we need them as upgraded moves. But I'm going to go just try to use my moveset as is first. So here we're just going to come and bring a cat into Kurt's house and he has allergies. So he's run outside. We're going to chase him down 
and now he's just gonna give up right there. He's gonna be like, no way. GSC PC, I cannot, I cannot handle this. Oh, I would have, I would have fought them too if you hadn't brought that cat here and caused all my allergies. Come on. That's basically how I feel sometimes when I get crazy dander allergies. Love animals, just hate the dander sometimes. So here, let's go ahead and just take on this first rocket where Scratch is an easy two hit KO or, oh, it looked like a two hitter. We actually got a three hitter there, but we should be able to just make our way through these rockets pretty darn easily. And sure enough, here we are on James Jr. with no resets against any of these rockets other than the first one. We had a little bit of a hiccup there, but now we can just simply move on. I think we're going to get through this one. We didn't use the berry here, though. Maybe bite is better just to maybe have the chance to flinch as well, but we get through just fine. So level 12 comes in and now it's time to move on to Bugsy's gym, where hopefully we can simply just take him down on the first attempt. So standing right in front of Bugsy with our Persian, we're coming in at level 13 with 44 HP. We've got Scratch, Growl, and Bite. We have 28 attack, 25 defense, 26 in both specials, and 39 speed. I'm going to give a berry here think this is the way to go. I think we can just use Scratch mostly. We might use some Bite Strats if we really need to get a flinch, but Scratch should be stronger since it's the same type move using our attack stat. Let's just see if it works out. So first attempt against Bugsy here, I'm just going to Scratch his Metapod. He can use String Shot to lower my speed. That's fine. We're still going to just knock him out in four hits. Kakuna comes out. It goes Harden as well. Once they harden, I don't know, Bite might be better, and it is. So here now, I'm actually going to Growl at the Scyther once, just to hopefully get it to do less damage. The problem is it just crit me there. And we're not faster, but maybe that was due to the speed drop earlier on? I'm not sure. So if they do use Harden, then we'll switch into Bite since it should do more damage and have the chance to flinch. We just really do not want the string shot if we can avoid it okay so here either way no we are in fact faster than the scyther and that's good because then once it starts using fury cutter we can bite it in order to reduce the chance of getting hit because it can flinch so it's not that bite is stronger than scratch it's that we want the flinches there and we got it bugsy goes down so just like that, we have gotten through with our Persian. We haven't used any TMs up to this point yet. And I don't think we need to here on the rival. Let's just see. Let's see how this rival fight goes. Now I want to test something really quickly. So I've just tested something in Gamehook. I'm going to see if I can change the rival's team right here. I started this run out against the Totodile team. So if we get a Bayleaf, that means that what I did just worked. If it doesn't turn out to be a bay leaf, if we get the Croconaw, then I know what I did didn't work. And then I can go back and try to study it more. I'm just trying to see because it might just be possible for me to actually manipulate the rival's team here. Let's see. So here we are, rival number two. We're just going to bite his Ghastly. That's a one hitter. Out comes the Zubat. We're going to just scratch it. And this is a three hitter. And finally, the moment of truth. Oh, there is the Bayleaf, okay. So it is in fact possible for me to affect the rival's team at this point. So we get Razor Leafed right there. Razor Leafed again. We're going for the bite and we get it. Level 16, Persian gets through. That's very nice. So that, that solves a couple things. If we wanna come back and retest a Pokemon just right here, and see if it can get through the Bayleaf team, for example, something like the Sand Slash that we did before, I can actually just directly change that rather than having to go back to the beginning of the game. That is very interesting to know. So here, let's save the game with this Persian. Good job, Persian. You have gotten through. And let's check our progress so far. So coming back to the progress so far, out of the first eight Pokemon that we have done in this challenge, we have gotten uh, kind of mixed results, guys. <laughs> so of course, we got Crobat through, we managed to get Golbat through, Venomoth got through, Dugtrio got through, and of course, Persian got through. But we failed with quite a few Pokemon. That Vileplume got wrecked. 
that blossom got wrecked that jump bluff absolutely got wrecked so we're batting four for three at this point and uh i'm not sure how it's gonna go but now it's time to get into some water types so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna run the quagsire the azumarill and of course the Golduck and just see which one of these water types is the best keeping in mind that of course Quagsire is a dual type so it's probably getting wrecked but we'll find out then we're going to come back with the channel member picks that are their unevolved forms of course Wooper and that Psyduck and see if we can get them through rival number two and of course Bugsy but I think rival two is the real wall in these ones so let's kick it off first with Quagsire. So the real question is, will Water Gun get us through with Quagsire or do we have to add on the Mud Slap? Of course, Mud Slap makes a lot of sense. It is a same type move, so it could be what we need in order to get through this section. Obviously, it doesn't help us at all when we're up against the Scyther, though, but it could be a strategy for getting through the Bayleaf. We've already seen a couple of these water type Pokemon use Mud Slap strats to actually get through that fight. Now, one thing that I am a little bit concerned about for these ground types, especially as we go through the game, is I don't believe we can get access to Soft Sand, the item that boosts ground type moves, without taking optional battles. The way that I know to get it is, of course, to fight the three girls that are just south of Goldenrod by surfing on the sea. But I don't know, is there another way to get access to that item? If so, let me know in the comments. But regardless, we can now we just move on. I think that water guns are going to be enough for all these rockets, but let's just find out. So here at level 11, we even learned the move slam, which at least gives us a strong physical move since we do have a slightly higher attack stat. Granted, slam isn't great because it's only 75% accurate, but hey, if it does more damage, I'm here for it. And just like that, we easily get through Proton, if you want to call him that, or James Jr. And it's an easy victory in this section. So now let's just make our way to Bugsy's gym, fight the required trainers, and then we can make our way onto the Bugsy fight itself. So coming into the Bugsy fight, I gotta say I'm pretty impressed with how good Quagsire has done so far. It's level 13, we've got 52 HP, we know Water Gun, Tail Whip, and Slam, so we at least can use Tail Whip with something now. And we've got 32 attack, 31 defense, 26 in both specials, and 19 speed. It's really the speed that's the problem, but we have really good HP. So we might just be able to get through this with the right kind of setup. Now, since Slam is our only damaging move and it is kind of inaccurate, I'm going to try a pink bow here. Let's just see how this goes. So first attempt against Bugsy, I'm going to lead off with Slam and miss. <laughs> then he string shots me. Come on. So here we're not getting the hits. Once we get him basically in a KO range, I'm just going to use Water Gun to finish him off. Here he uses Harden. Once the Harden comes in, I think we just go for Water Gun instead. So this is looking like a three hitter. We get poisoned though. That was not good. And out comes Scyther. Quick attack, we slam, but we're poisoned. So there's not much that we can do here as we get knocked out. So the inaccuracy of our move is really the problem here. Let's see if we can get better luck on this one. So here we go slam. We're going to go water gun after he uses harden and just knock this one out. Might be better to just go water gun on the cocoons since I mean, they're going to use harden anyway, and we just want to avoid that poison if we can. Now it's against Scyther that I think we at least have to think about going with the slam instead. Keep in mind that stab water gun is using our weaker special attack stat whereas scyther has even defense and special defense so really we should just go with whatever is better for us so i'm gonna tail whip him once here let's see what the tail whip does and then slam this is looking like a three hitter here if we can just manage the hits he's gonna knock us out with fury cutter there though oh that was so close and he's just doing too much damage with the built up fury cutter there so i don't think we're getting through that one so instead let's try rival 2 and i'm definitely going to add on the mud slap tm here i think it's the required move in order to get through this so let's try this first attempt we're just going to mud slap here on the ghastly i'm sure it's the best decision we get paralyzed immediately but we nearly one shot there 
So out is going to come the Bay Leaf, and Razor Leaf just destroys us. I'm not sure if we can even outspeed the Bay Leaf with our measly 19 speed, so this one might also be basically impossible. Let's just see. So we're definitely going to need. Yeah, we're massively outsped. It's 28 speed versus our 19 speed. I'm not sure this fight is even possible after beating Bugsy, but let's go back and let's try Bugsy a few more times just to see. And otherwise, yeah, Quagsire might be eliminated here. But here we do manage to get the Scyther on full health. So let's just see. It starts the Fury Cutter right there, but it misses turn two. It changes to Quick Attack, and now we might just be able to win. And there we go. We do manage to get through. He missed a Fury Cutter, and then he just changed to Quick Attack, and that gave us the victory. But even there, we only got to level 15, and we've only got 21 speed. And with our four times weakness to Razor Leaf, I'm not sure that this is going to be enough. We might just get completely destroyed. So here, let's try again against the rival. So obviously the Ghastly isn't a problem. We're just going to Mud Slap and Mud Slap it again. And that's a perfectly fine fight right there. Bayleaf's Razor Leaf is the problem. The four times super effectiveness. Technically, this move can miss 5% of the time, so it's not completely impossible, but we're going to need a run where we get the miss, then we set up the accuracy drop, and then he just proceeds to never be able to hit us. There is also just this weird percentage chance that he won't use Razor Leaf, I think, just because it, that seems to be the way the AI works, but we're kind of hoping for ridiculous luck here. Oh, here we actually do survive a Razor Leaf there, though. So it's not a guaranteed one hit KO. And that gives us just a little bit of hope that maybe we could get through this. I'm not super confident, though. So here we did get a Razor Leaf miss, though we are paralyzed. We survive the second hit as we get another Mud Slap on it. And we're just Mud Slapping to try to get the accuracy drops. But even with a Razor Leaf miss, and multiple mud slaps, taking it to minus three accuracy. This just takes way too much luck. There's no way that we're getting through this fight with anything reasonable. There could be some really ridiculous setup, you know, a miss from Razor Leaf. We hit all the mud slaps, he never hits us. Then we could eventually just switch into slam and win. But uh, I don't think that it's going to work here. So we're just going to have to call it right there. Quagsire you're basically out of there. So with that out of the way, it's time to give Azumarill a chance. I'm not sure how you say it. Azumarill, Azumarill. How do you say? Just tell me. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce Pokemon names. Anyway, for me, this was Pika Blue because that's what we always thought it was back in the day. I remember hearing Merrill's name originally before the Gen 2 games even came out. It was one of the supposed Poke Gods of Gen 1. But here we have uh, got the official PK Blue, of course, and uh, it might just have a chance here. It's only a mono water type, so it doesn't have that four times weakness to Bay Leaf, but that Razor Leaf is tough. So I'm not sure it's going to work out in the end. So let's see if Team Rocket likes a Pika Blue, and I'm just going to go ahead and give a berry here because I think it's the best way to go. And we'll just stick with the berries until we get through this section at least. And sure enough, this section is just no problem for a bulky water type. The real question is just, can we get through Bugsy more efficiently here? And if so, can we also find a way to get through rival number two? We do have better speed than we just had with Quagsire, but not by a lot. This isn't a particularly fast Pokemon. So we just have to kind of hope that our higher special defense maybe helps us out here. First things first, though, we're just going to beat up these trainers. They're completely nothing to talk about, so it's just on to Bugsy. So here we have made it to Bugsy himself. Let's just check the stats as we come in. Azumarill is at level 14 with 57 HP. We know Tackle, Defense Curl, Tail Whip, and Water Gun. We could also learn the TM Swift if we really wanted to here. We're just going to hold a berry coming in, and we've got 24 attack, 32 defense, 24 special attack, 32 special defense, and 24 speed. So I don't think we're going to outspeed against anything super important, but let's see if we can just win this fight. 
So first off, I'm just going to lead off the same strategy as we had before, but with one kind of difference. We know Defense Curl, which increases our defense. I think we can just set up this move completely on the first Metapod. Yes, it's going to string shot me and lower my speed, but this will just make sure that with all these defense boosts set up, we should be taking the minimum amount of damage when we get to that final Scyther. So we two shot there on the Metapod. Kakuna hardens. Looks to be a three hit KO here. We're just hoping not to get poisoned. We do not, so that's perfectly fine. And we get to learn rollout. Wait just a second, because we can learn rollout right here over Tail Whip. And now let's roll out on this one. And of course, rollout is stronger when you use defense curl. We might just have a strategy here. Hold up. So we do get through there, but we've only got 27 speed, so we are going to be outsped by the Bayleaf. So I think we're going to have to one hit KO it if we're going to have any shot. So I think we set up a defense curl and then go for the rollout strat. Let's see if this works, though. So here, rival two attempt number one. Like I said, I'm going to set up defense curl first and then go for rollout here. And it's going to be a two hitter there on the Ghastly. We get poison powder from the bay leaf, and then we survive. So we get to finish it off with the rollout there, and we roll out on the Zubat. So just like that, Azumarill, since it doesn't have a four times weakness to Razor Leaf, and it gets access to rollout at the perfect time, completely crushes that fight. So this Pokemon is moving on, and that is ridiculous because rollout with Defense Curl theoretically could get us through a ton of battles like it could honestly be a completely broken strategy i've seen runs where that has been the strategy basically the entire run but we'll see if it hits a wall at some point there are obviously some trainers who are not weak to rock that we're gonna have to deal with as we go through but then maybe our other coverage is enough for now azumarill joins the winner's column so here with Golduck, we kind of have an interesting situation. We know the moves Disable and Confusion with this Pokemon. So in theory, we both have neutrally effective moves against a lot of opponents, and we can use Disable to stop them from using their best moves. We could disable things like Fury Cutter to stop it from building up, or disable a move like Razor Leaf to prevent the Bayleaf from getting multiple hits on us. Now, I'm not sure how our stats are actually going to pan out by the time we get there, but let's just see if we can survive a single hit, at least from the Bayleaf. In that case, we might just have a chance here. And obviously, Razor Leaf has a higher critical hit chance, but it's not like Gen 1 where it would basically be a guaranteed critical hit. So we can still go for the chance of not getting the crit and then trying to get some setup off. So we're going to use Confusion on Kurt, and it's going to turn out that he hurts himself in Confusion. He just falls down the well for some reason. Good job, Kurt. <laughs> so Confusion should basically wreck all of the rockets down here since it's super effective against most of their Pokemon. Now, I'm sure I'm not the only one, but as a kid, I actually thought that Psyduck and Golduck were water psychic Pokemon, just like Slowbro or a Starmie. And I was always kind of surprised that their psychic type moves didn't do very much damage. I don't think as a kid I ever even bothered to look at the actual stat screen to see that they weren't psychic type Pokemon. But psychic or no, our psychic type confusion is making quick work of all of these trainers. So it's time to go into Bugsy with a level 13 Golduck. With 48 HP, we've got Scratch, Tail Whip, Disable, and Confusion as the moveset for now at least. We have 31 Attack, 30 Defense, 34 Special Attack, 30 Special Defense, and 32 Speed. I'm just going to slap on a berry here, and hopefully this is enough to just get through. So it's time for Bugsy attempt number one, and I'm just going to go straight for Confusion. It's looking to be a 3-hit KO on the Metapod. We should get a slightly better range, I think, on Kakuna. We did get string shot at once, but we still just get a two hit KO here anyway and outspeed. It's on to the Scyther, and here's where I think we go disable to stop it from using Fury Cutter. Now we can go into the confusion spam. We're kind of hoping to actually confuse it, and then maybe we just have a chance to get through this. Okay, there it becomes confused. It's trying to go Fury Cutter. 
So I'm just going to try to disable its moves. Oh, we disabled Leer instead. No. Oh, he becomes confused again, but it just wasn't enough. He was kind of smart to go for Leer there when we were trying to disable him. I'm kind of surprised he did that. <laughs> so here we disable Fury Cutter, but we really do need some sort of confusion on him to have any shot here, I think. The quick attack just does too much damage. So we're just not getting through that fight at this point. So here he is confused and he hits himself in confusion and we're going to knock him out on this turn. We only needed him to hit himself in confusion once after disabling Fury Cutter. And just like that, we have beaten Bugsy. It just took a couple of resets there, but we did get the job done. So now the question is, can we get through Rival 2? We're going to just try to go in with our moveset as is. And if it doesn't work, we might have to think of some other strats. We do have access to both Fury Cutter as well as Mud Slap and Swift here. So this should be possible, I think, even if we had to end up going with some sort of ridiculous Fury Cutter strat, it might just work out. But let's try with our normal moveset first here, where we're just going to go Confusion on this Ghastly, get the one shot right there. We outspeed Bayleaf, so I'm going to use Confusion once it gets confused. It goes Poison Powder on me turn one, and now it goes Razor Leaf. We survive. I'm going to disable Razor Leaf here. It hits itself in confusion, and we're taking a lot of poison damage, but we do knock out the Bay Leaf. Out comes the Zubat, where we're just going to go confusion, and it almost knocked me out with the bite, but we've got three HP remaining, and we actually win on the first attempt against the rival. No TMs needed. That is ridiculous. Oh, and Goldeck fainted. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't remember that I was poisoned as I was coming out of the battle. But yeah, so uh, Goldeck kind of hates us now. I think it's probably not going to get returned anytime soon. But uh, that was the best of the three of these Pokemon, honestly. I mean, Azumarill was pretty good once we got rollout, but I felt like Goldeck really was the one. And that could continue to be the case, or it could be that Whitney just completely changes this. If we get through Whitney though, Morty shouldn't be that bad with the psychic type moves. And I mean, Confusion should be good on Chuck's gym. And Water's gonna be fine against Jasmine. I mean, we might just make some serious progress with this Pokemon if we can just get through Whitney. So looking back at our progress so far right now, we've gotten through 11 challengers so far. And we've only got 45 passed and 20 failed. We had to add Quagsire to the fail column. But now we have two of our member picks that we have to go back and check out. We've got Psyduck and we've got Wooper. They, they both have egg moves that were chosen by channel members. Let's see how Sir Quack does first. Up against the Wooper, I forget what its name was. So first up, we've got the Wooper that was chosen by Kyle Baker, the legendary Ogosh. We're here with King Fella. That's right, that was his choice. Awesome. So last time we made this Wooper a lot better by giving it access to the move Ancient Power, which of course has the potential to give us Omni Boost. We can also get access to the Mud Slap TM, but I'm not sure it's going to be enough here, Kyle. We might just get wrecked. And it's all just because we can't outspeed when we get to that Bayleaf. Now, that being said, I do have one idea that could potentially get a whooper through. You see, since this is not a standard whooper, but a whooper that has been bred since we had to get the egg move, there is a possibility that we could actually have a better move set than this. And we know that Kyle is the absolute king of just leaving excellent comments on the channel. So I think I might just make his whooper a king tier Pokemon. You see, Kyle's Wooper can add another move, Amnesia, because Amnesia is a move that is learned by Wooper via level up, and you can pass down level up moves to offspring when you're breeding. So technically, it should be possible to have a level five Wooper that not only has ancient power, but also has the move Amnesia. And if that's the case, then in theory, at least, we would be able to actually get through this. But first things first, we've got to get our Wooper through this section and to the Rival 2 fight. So let's see how this goes. Now, the one problem with relying on Ancient Power is that we have to keep running out in order to heal up. 
You might say, well, why not use Water Gun? Well, you can see that our attack stat is way higher than our special stat. So even with the same type attack bonus, Ancient Power is just the stronger move. So here we can learn Slam and just put that over our Tail Whip that we had before, because I think we want to keep Ancient Power and Amnesia for now. But let's just see if this is enough to get through. We're not quite one-shotting these Zubats, so it's not like we're completely overpowered here. We're just really going to be banking on the fact that Amnesia may allow us to survive against that Razor Leaf. So fortunately, we do get through all the Rocket Grunts without any major issues. Ancient Power should just be great against Bugsy's Gym as well. So let's get straight to the Bugsy fight. And then finally, Rival 2 is going to be the actual test in this one. So here we're ready to take on Bugsy. We've got a pretty broken Pokemon and we do have a four times super effective move for the Scyther. So let's just see if it works out here. We're going to lead off first against the Metapod with the Ancient Power. If we can get an Omni Boost, that would be amazing. But here I'm actually going to switch into Water Gun just because we don't want to use up all of our Ancient Powers before we get to Scyther. We're taking pretty decent damage here though, so I probably should have put a Berry on. Now we get poisoned here as well, but we reach level 14 and now it's just time to see if the ancient powers are enough. We survive and then just get quick attacked down. So I think a berry would have done the job there. So let's just try this again with the berry on. So here we actually got one Omni Boost on the Kakuna. Now we're on to the Scyther and it's using Fury Cutter, but we do massive damage with the ancient power and we get through in two hits. So clearly, we can get through that fight. It's not actually that bad to get through on the second attempt. But all of this has just been pre-game because we know it's Bayleaf that is the actual wall in this run. But if we can find a way through it, then we might just be able to say that Kyle Baker's oh gosh King Fella is actually going to move on. So let's just try Rival 2 for the first time. I'm excited for this one. So first things first, here against the Ghastly, I am going straight into Amnesia. We're going to set up all of the Amnesias here because we want to make sure that we have the maximum amount of special defense as we get into the next Pokemon. So here we should now be able to go for the Ancient Power. We're paralyzed though, that was pretty bad. But, oh, and we ran out of PP, rip. Oh, we got wrecked. So I'm not sure this is going to work out this time. Here against the Bayleaf, let's just see how much damage it does now with Razor Leaf. Still pretty darn good damage there. We get a miss from Razor Leaf there. I think we needed to still have some Ancient Powers though. So here Bayleaf goes Reflect first, and that's actually really bad because that means that we can't do nearly as much damage to it with our physical attacks. Razor Leaf does really good damage there and we just get two hit down. Uh, this might be a matter of getting some crazy luck with our ancient powers here. So with lots of resets, I just can't seem to get the luck to get this fight to work. So we might just have to give up on this Pokemon, but I have one last idea. You see, there's actually another egg move that we could theoretically give to this Pokemon that just might give it enough of an advantage. I'm actually going to forget the move Water Gun here, and instead, I'm going to give a much stronger move, Body Slam. You see, Body Slam is available via simply breeding, usually with something in the Poliwag line, but of course, we've already noted that, you know, we could just simply chain breed, get a father that has all of these moves, and then simply come in here and just start wrecking. So let's just see if maybe this gets us through. So the logic here is that after we set up all of the amnesias, we can try to body slam and get the paralysis on that bay leaf. And then once it's paralyzed, we can then start adding on the accuracy strats as well. And because it has two ways to not hit us, one, it can be paralyzed, two, it can just missed due to the accuracy drops, we might have an easier time getting through this fight. 
And keep in mind that the paralysis also allows us to outspeed the Bayleaf, so that could also be a major factor in getting through this fight eventually. So this time we get the critical hit body slam that also paralyzes Bayleaf. Now I think we can go into the mud slap spam just trying to lower its accuracy. Maybe we can get through this from this point, I'm not sure. It's just trying to go razor leaf on me of course. We get knocked out by a crit, that was like the best luck too. You could have argued, I guess, for going for the body slams and just going all in there, but I don't know. I don't think we get through very often with that strategy. So this time we get the turn one paralysis on Bayleaf. We're going into the mud slap spam now. We're just hoping that we get its accuracy all the way down without getting hit. And then we're just going to go into our attacks. Now we do take a hit there. We heal with the berry, but the next razor leaf that hits us will just knock us out. So we just need crazy luck here in order to get through. So, unfortunately, even in the best case scenarios that I've managed to get to go so far, we are just not getting through this fight. So, Kyle, I regret to inform you, but I don't think this Pokemon can do it. We're just gonna have to call it right there, except there might be one last ditch effort. You see, we can technically pass down TM moves via breeding. And one of those Tia moves is, of course, the legendary Ice Punch. So instead of having Mud Slap on here, which we learned via Tia earlier, we could have just put on Ice Punch. And now this might just be a broken enough moveset that we can actually get through this fight. Let's find out. So there we finally keep the Bailey frozen and we're able to knock it out. We're on to the final goal or final Zubat. And now we're just hoping not to take too much damage. It does look like Ice Punch is a two hitter there. So we finally get through, but that took like a hundred resets almost to get through Rival 2, even with this completely broken moveset. I'm not sure if this Pokemon has any chance going forward, but we're just gonna roll with it. Kyle Baker, you're a legend. Thanks for supporting the channel. I would definitely have given up long before if not for the fact that you have just given me so much support both here and that RBY Pokemon Challenges guy, you know, just gotta say how much I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. And with that, let's get to our next Pokemon. It's time for Sir Quack the Psyduck. So Sir Quack comes to you thanks to the support of Toxic Cross, another one of the channel members. And uh, I'm hoping this one's a little bit smoother than that Wooper, because the water ground type it just struck me as weird. I know that they put it in there just to kind of throw people off when they're trying to use electric type moves against these Pokemon. But really, I think we need to uh, not have that typing. <laughs> so here with Sir Quack, we did add the move Ice Beam. It is a very nice move to have here. And theoretically, it lets us take the same sort of strategy as we just saw there with Wooper, but hopefully just a little more consistently. Keep in mind though that we could just go for Fury Cutter strats if we really want to, since technically that would also be possible as long as we could land all the hits. But before we can worry about any of that, we gotta get through this Slowpoke well, and we're just gonna hope that Ice Beam carries us. Now I don't think we're gonna have any trouble against the randos inside of Bugsy's gym, so we'll get straight to the Bugsy fight here. So a quick look at the stats before we take him on. We've got a level 13 Psyduck with 40 HP. We have Ice Beam, Tail Whip, Scratch, and now Disable as well, as well as a Berry just so that we can get a little heal on. We've got 23 Attack, 22 Defense, 26 Special Attack, 22 Special Defense, and 24 Speed. Let's just see if we can beat Bugsy. I hope this one's easy. So here Bugsy attempt number one, I'm just going to Ice Beam here. And it appears to be a two hitter on the Metapod. Should be pretty much the same here on the Kakuna. We get poisoned. I think we've gotten poisoned every time an opponent has used a move that can poison us. But uh, we at least get through that and level up. And now I'm just gonna go straight for the Ice Beam here. It looks to be a three hit KO here. Oh, we actually get the two hit range and there we go. We beat Bugsy on the first attempt. So that was fine. Now it's just time to take on the rival and he is the real challenge here. So here rival two attempt number one. Let's just see how we do first off against the Ghastly. We're just going Ice Beam. It's the only move that can hit Ghastly. It's a two hit KO. Now against Bayleaf, I believe it's faster than us. 
Ghost Razor Leaf, we're trying to go disable. We want to disable the Razor Leaf so that hopefully we can just knock it out after that. Of course, the problem with disable is it's only 55% accurate, so we're going to need quite a few attempts at this before we can actually make it work. So here it turns out that disable's not even needed. The Bay Leaf is a two hit KO with Ice Beam, so we should just use that. I'm now going to learn Confusion over Tail Whip and let's just take on this final Zubat where I think we just go for the Ice Beam. And it's a one hit KO, so just like that, Sir Quack gets through much easier than the Wooper. Toxic Cross, thank you so much for your support, man. I appreciate you. So Kyle Baker and Toxic Cross both progress, though. Kyle Baker, I mean, you're, you're kind of skirting the rules there, but you got it. So with that, let me just give a massive thank you to the channel members. Today we featured Kyle Baker and Toxic Cross, but if you'd like to join the channel membership and save one of your favorite Pokemon that failed in the challenge so far, go ahead and click the link down below. So now looking at our results so far, it's time to take on this section with Primeape, a fighting type Pokemon. Let's just see how this goes in this section. I'm not sure what we're going to have in order to hit the Ghastly, maybe Mudslap, but let's find out. So Primeape does have access to Rage, which should make everything until we get to Bugsy and Rival 2 incredibly easy here. The issue really is just how we're going to take on that Ghastly. So now standing in front of Bugsy, we can check the stats on our Primeape. We are at level 13 with 44 HP. We have Scratch, Leer, Low Kick, and Rage as the moveset. We're coming in with 37 attack, 25 defense, 25 special attack, 27 special defense, 34 speed. We're basically fast and we hit hard physically, but let's see if Rage is just enough to get us through this entire fight. Number one, I'm just gonna go right in on Rage. If they tackle me, that's basically fine because it's just gonna build my Rage further. And we just want as high of a rage value as we can get by the time that we get to the final Scyther. So here we knock out the Metapod onto Kakuna, which of course we outspeed and we nearly one shot. We get the two hit KO there. Onto finally Scyther, who uses Leer. We're just using Rage, and as he builds Fury Cutter, we'll, we're building Rage, but we've run out of PP. No! So now I have to switch into Scratch. Two more Scratches does take him down. And just like that, we get through and we learn Karate Chop. I'm going to learn Karate Chop over Scratch for now. Let's just do that. I think it's the better move overall since it does have a high critical hit chance. But now we have to figure out how to get through rival number two. And this is where we definitely need to learn a new move because there is no way that we are going to get through this fight with this current moveset. We can't hit a ghost type Pokemon. So that's where I think the legendary Mudslap comes in. So here, let's just throw Mudslap on over Leer and see how this goes. So here, attempt number one against Rival 2. We're going to just go for the Mudslap here on the Ghastly. It's going to be a two hit KO. We take it down on the Bayleaf now. Obviously, it doesn't resist our moves. I'm going to Karate Chop it, hoping for the crit. Since it does have a higher critical hit chance, we didn't take that much damage from the Razor Leaf, so that was fine. Now we just need to go Rage, I guess, on this Zubat. And hopefully we don't get bad Confusion luck here. It uses Bite, which builds our Rage for us, but we hit ourselves in Confusion, and we just keep hitting ourselves. If we don't hit ourselves in Confusion every turn, I think we can win that fight. So round two, let's just go back into the slap slaps on this ghastly here. We get put to sleep this time, and now it's trying to lick our monkey. Come on. <laughs> oh, we're getting licked, guys. Oh, and he's using spite. No, no, he's getting rid of our mudslap PP, but we did have one left, fortunately. So here, I don't know, it might be better to try to go rage, but rage just doesn't really do much damage here is the problem. So it's not like we're going to get through this using Rage strats, I don't think. Pretty sure we have to Karate Chop here to get through this one. So we get through to the final Zubat. I'm going to go Rage again. We're doing more damage because we already had some Rage set up. And there we go. We get through on this attempt. So it's not perfectly consistent on Rival 2, but it is definitely possible to get through that fight. It's going to depend a little bit on Confusion Luck, Poison Luck you know, crits, things like that, but you can get through that fight just fine with a Primeape. And this Pokemon should do pretty well in the near future. I mean, 
we're definitely going to be fine against Whitney. I mean, if anything's going to be Whitney, it has to be a fighting type like this. And then, I mean, Jasmine might actually not be that bad for this Pokemon. It's obviously going to do good against Price, so it really comes down to just how we do against Morty and Rival 3, I think. If we get through those, we might actually be able to make some serious progress with this Primeape. So with that being done, let's jump ahead a little bit. Let's check out Pseudo Wudo and Apem, and then we'll come back and check out the whole Mareep line and finish off with my personal favorite of this set, the Growlithe. Who knows, we might even see an Arcanine in this one. So Pseudo Wudo is going to be very interesting here. Obviously, we have Mimic and we have Rock Throw, which has been buffed in Gen 2. So in theory, both of those moves should give us a decent shot. Plus, I mean, we do have the Rock typing. So we're going to resist a lot of moves in this section. The real problem is the Rival. The Rival could just wreck us. I'm not sure if I put him on the Bayleaf Rival, but we already saw before that I can change his team to the Bayleaf team. So I may just do that and Bayleaf might just wreck this Pokemon. We're going to have to see. I'm already thinking ahead to my strategy for Bayleaf and I think that what I'm going to try to do is to mimic the move Hypnosis off of the Ghastly. Theoretically, if we have Hypnosis and we can just put the opponent to sleep, it's not going to be perfectly accurate by any means, but it could possibly work as long as we can survive one hit we might just be able to make this one work here. But one thing we can say for sure is we don't really expect any trouble from any of the random trainers in this section. Even Kurt's just gonna run away when he sees our weird rock tree. So uh, let's just knock all these guys out and move on quickly. And here we just reached level 10 and we learned to move Flail as well. So if we're on low health, Flail could be a really strong move to knock out some opponents. So Pseudo Wudo's basically one shot everything in most of this section. I think Proton's coughing was basically the only Pokemon that we couldn't just easily one shot here. But let's check the stats before we go into this Bugsy fight. We're at level 13 with 46 HP. Rock Throw, Mimic, and Flail is the move set for now. We have 35 attack, 39 defense, 17 special attack, 26 special defense, and 17 speed. So here is Bugsy attempt number one. Of course, we're just going to go rock throw right here and one shot. Oh, not quite one shot. I'm going to flail just to knock out that Metapod after that. That was too bad. Out comes the Scyther, but we've got a four times super effective rock throw if it just hits. That's a one hit KO there. And now we can move on to the final Kakuna, which I mean, what's it going to do? It's just going to get wrecked. So we get to level 15. Easy, easy victory. Healing and everything is just optional for Bugsy when you've got a pseudo Wudo. The real question is, how do we do against the rival? So I'm going to go in with my basic game plan, mimic hypnosis, knock out the ghastly with the rock throw, and then just see if we can use the hypnosis in order to get through the bay leaf. Let's try this one time and see if it works. So here, first things first, let's get that mimic action on. And oh, wait, no, we we actually need it to use hypnosis rip. So we're going to have to reset a few times here. I forgot that's how Mimic works in Gen 2. You don't get to pick the move. You have to mimic the last move they used. So we need a run where he actually uses Hypnosis turn one against us. And we don't get put to sleep. So like a 40% chance of not being put to sleep. So this is going to take a few resets. So this time we do get a Mimic Hypnosis here. Now I'm just going to Rock Throw and knock out the Ghastly. Out comes Bayleaf. It goes Reflect turn one, and now Razor Leaf one-shots us with a crit. Okay, this is another one where we mimic Hypnosis, knock out the Ghastly. Come on, Bayleaf. He goes Reflect again. Once again, we miss, but he does not knock us out with a single Razor Leaf. So now we can try to Rock Throw here and just see how much damage we do. The problem, of course, is that he uh, put up the Reflect turn one. But now we actually get the Reflect to go down. We take down that Bayleaf on the Zubat, where we're just going to Rock Throw. It's a one hit KO. And just like that, Pseudo Wudo is through. So Mimic Strats do create some situations where we can manage to get through that fight. You do have to reset a little bit in order to get a run where the Ghastly actually uses Mimic. Obviously, a critical hit from Razor Leaf is just a one hit KO on this Pokemon. But... If it doesn't crit, it only does a little over half damage and it might just use Reflect or something. It seems like 
the rival two AI is set where if he's not just going to one shot you, then he will sometimes mix in some other moves. So in that case, I think that we just made that work pretty reasonably and we get the W. So now let's check on the Apem. Let's see how he does in this section. So here with Apem, we do have sand attack strats if we really want them. And by a level up, it looks like we're not going to get anything particularly useful here. I mean, Baton Pass just does nothing in a solo run. We can learn Swift, obviously, if it's on the level up learn set. It's also available via TM. We also get Mud Slap, so I think this is going to be fine. We're just going to have to throw on Mud Slap before we take on Rival 2. But the real question is just, can we get through even with this move set for now up to the Rival 2 point, or are we just going to have to learn Swift early via TM? Fury Cutter is also a possibility here. So first things first, we have to see if we can just get through this Slowpoke well. I'm going to start off with the Scratch strats, but if they don't seem to be working, then we may change into the Swift strat here. These Ratatas are easy to hit KOs though, so as long as the ranges look good, I'll hold off on learning the TM as long as possible. And sure enough, our normal type moves with same type attack bonus are more than enough. You don't even need to mess with any sand attacks or anything down there. You just wreck everything in Slowpoke well. So let's just beat up on some easy trainers and make our way to Bugsy. So here coming into the Bugsy fight, I'm going to give a berry just to be safe for Abram and Abram <laughs> for Apem. And let's just check the stats right here. We have a level 14 Apem with 44 HP, Scratch, Tail Whip, Sand Attack, and Baton Pass is the moveset. And we've got 29 attack, 25 defense, 21 special attack, 25 special defense, and 34 speed. In the worst case scenario, we can go some sand attack strats on the Scyther, but let's just see if we can get through with an all out attack strat first. So here before the Harden, it looked like a two hit KO on the Metapod. After it uses Harden, it was a three hit KO. Here, the Kakuna is actually a little bit more bulky, it seems, and we do get poisoned right there. But now we're on to the Scyther. I'm just gonna start by scratching it and just see the range. Looks like we did 10 damage, so this is a five hit KO normally. So I think the strategy is probably to use a couple of sand attacks and maybe a tail whip here and there. And clearly me getting a three hit KO on that Metapod the first time was the result of a critical hit, but without any defense buffs, these are three hit KOs on these cocoons. One tail whip gets them to be a two hit KO. So here for Scyther, let's just give him a sand attack because we can. And how about a tail whip just to see how it affects the damage? We get wrecked. So I'm pretty sure we need to avoid getting poisoned here. That seems to be a common theme so far. We could even go for accuracy strats on the Kakuna, but I think the better play is just to tail whip it once and then just start trying to scratch it down. If it goes really hard on Harden, we might have to tail whip again. We just keep getting poisoned though. Poison Sting is one in five to poison an opponent. So we just kind of have to get the right kind of luck there. So this just doesn't really seem to be working. So I think this is the spot to add on Swift. Swift is one and a half times stronger than Scratch. So in theory, we should just get better ranges. Even if they use a Harden, it probably doesn't matter at this point. So I'm just going to put Swift in the top slot. And here it's looking to be a three hit KO even after a Harden. Very nice. So we're getting the same ranges, but we don't have to sit here and try to set up for a turn. We still get poisoned by the only poison sting that hits us. But now we can take on this Scyther and do more damage. Now Swift is doing about 14 damage here. So this is a four hit KO range now. So this time we get to the Scyther on full health. I'm going to give it at least a sand attack Let's give it a tail whip as well and now go into the swift spam. We're going to heal right here. He's using leer. He's using quick attack, but we're able to knock him out now. All we needed was just not to be poisoned when we got to the final Scyther. So there we go. We get through that fight and now it's time to just decide how we're going to get through this next section. I think that we're going to add on the mud slap, of course, but let's add it on over scratch. Scratch is just basically not necessary when you have Swift. There's more than enough PP in Swift in order to knock out most opponents. So I think this is the way to go. We'll keep our other status moves in case we need them. So here, let's save the game and get into the rival two fight. 
Let's see how this goes against this Ghastly, where we're just going to start off with the Mud Slap. It's looking to be a two hit KO as he misses a Hypnosis. Very nice. Out comes a Zubat. We're just going to use Swift here. It's a two hitter as well. And now out comes the Bayleaf, where I'm going to give it a Tail Whip first just to lower its defense. And now we get a critical hit Swift and it's a two hitter after the crit. So it would have been a three hitter without the crit, I think. Perfectly fine. Easy victory. We completely destroy the rival. And just like that, Apem has gotten it done. So we are starting to add some Pokemon to the pass column. This episode has been a lot more mixed than most of the runs that we've done recently. Just because of the fact that there were so many grass types and so many water types that were just getting wrecked by Rival 2's Bayleaf. But there we go. We have made a little bit of progress. We'll keep the Fury Cutter for later. There might be a situation where Fury Cutter is a good strategy for this Pokemon if it can just manage to build up enough Fury Cutters, but we won't go that strategy just yet. We're going to just hold that in the bag for now. Anyway, let's move on. And now let's take on the entire Mareep line and just see how they do. We'll start with Ampharos and work our way down just to see if it's possible to get through with potentially even this entire team. But now it is time for Ampharos, and of course we do have access to Thundershock and Thunder Wave. We can go for some Paralysis strats. I think we'll probably learn Swift as well if we really want it. But there are no Mud Slap strats in this section, so we're just going to have to rely on Paralysis and hopefully just damage output in order to get through this section. Looking ahead, I'm kind of anticipating that Rival 2's Bayleaf yet again will be the problem in this one just because it can do a lot of damage and we don't have anything super great against it. We aren't necessarily a top tier physical attacker. Ampharos is probably going to be fine if I have to guess, but by the time we work down to Mareep, this might turn out to be impossible. We might just not be doing enough damage when we get to that final Bayleaf. So first things first, we got to get through the Slowpoke. Well, I'm just going to go with the Thunder shocks here. I think this is the best way to go. They're just two shotting here on the Rattatas. So unless we run into any walls here, we're just going to rush right on through until we get to Bugsy's gym. And fortunately, coughing doesn't have great special defense. So this is actually just an easy three hit KO and the Slowpoke well is done at level 14. Bugsy is just standing right in front of us. We have one reset due to a routing mistake. That's really it. So with that, we can simply check the stats and get into this fight. I don't think Bugsy is going to be the problem in this one, though. Here, Ampharos is coming in at level 15. We've got 57 HP, Thundershock, Growl, Tackle, and Thunder Wave is the move set. We've got 33 attack, 33 defense, 44 special attack, 37 special defense, and 27 speed. I'm going to throw on a berry just to be safe, and let's just try to get through this fight. Bugsy attempt number one, we're just going to lead off with the Thundershock right away. It's going to be a two hit KO on the Metapod. We level up to level 16 as well here. Now Thundershock is also a two hit KO on the Kakuna. And I don't think we need to mess around. I think we just go Thundershock right here on the Scyther. It's starting to build up Fury Cutter, but a critical hit one shots it. And there we go. Level 17 comes in and we have beaten Bugsy. So now it's just a question of how we do against Rival 2. We're going to hold off on the Swift TM for now, but we're just going to keep it in our pocket and we're going to try with our current moveset, just going for maybe like a Thunder Wave strat on that Bayleaf and just seeing then if we can tackle it down. Let's see if this works. So Rival 2 attempt number one. Here is his Ghastly. We're just going to Thundershock it and get a critical hit one shot. Out comes Bayleaf. We're just going to Thunder Wave first. Razor Leaf does 10 damage there, so really not terrible. We've got the Baryon to heal as well. Oh, I didn't mean to use Thundershock. Let's go Tackle instead. And Tackle seems to be doing about six damage. So it's not great here. I think we're going to need the Swift strat in order to get through this one reliably. But it does look like we've got enough to knock out that Bayleaf. We level up to level 18 here. We can go Thundershock on the Zubat and one shot it. So actually, yeah, Ampharos gets through without needing to use any TMs whatsoever. No improvements to its moveset, but it's just fine for this section. So Ampharos gets through, but now we have to find out if Flaffy can do the same thing with its lower stats. And it might just be that that's the point where we have to add on the Swift DM in order to make this one reasonable. 
We did get pretty good paralysis luck on that Bayleaf. It was paralyzed like three or four turns in that fight. So with worse paralysis luck, we definitely could have lost that one. So one big difference, of course, is that Flaffy does not start off with the Thunder Wave. We've only got Thunder Shock at this point. So we're going to have to level up a little bit in order to get access to that move. And Swift is just basically going to be a requirement here, if I have to guess. Now, I kind of expect in general that electric types are going to do really well in this section as far as getting through the gym leaders, and it's just Rival 2's Bayleaf that will be the major problem for them. That being said, as we go through the run, there are going to be more and more situations where these Pokemon don't have great setups, and we're just going to start to get wrecked with them, I think, because a lot of these Pokemon just don't have great movesets, not wide enough to deal with things like Dragon types that are coming up later in the game. Now, fortunately, I don't think we need Thunder Wave here in the Slowpoke well. We're just going to come down here and show our shocking abilities that are going to keep Kurt from even coming and trying to do anything. He's going to be too shocked watching this sheep just electrocute rats, apparently. So let's just make our way through this section and get to Bugsy's gym. So now let's get into the Bugsy fight. But first, I should check the stats, of course. We're coming into Bugsy with a level 15 Flaffy with 51 HP. Tackle, Growl, and Thundershock. We won't get access to Thunder Wave until level 18. And we have 27 Attack, 27 Defense, 34 Special Attack, 28 Special Defense, and 24 Speed. Let's see if this is enough to get through. So Bugsy attempt at number one. We're obviously just going to spam the Thundershock the entire way. I don't see any reason to do anything else. We paralyze the first Metapod, and it's a two-hit KO. Out comes Kakuna, which also appears to be a two-hitter, though it does poison us. And we're on to the Scyther. Fury Cutter gets started, but with a critical hit, we did well over half. And it's just a two hitter thanks to that crit. And we easily win getting the level 17. So that was super easy, kind of as we would expect. But now we have to take on rival number two. And this is where this could get really hard. I'm going to try it once with my current moveset. And if it's not working, we're going to try the Swift Strat here just to see if that gets us through. So attempt number one. We're just going to go all in on attack here, basically. So Thundershock first, but we get put to sleep by the Ghastly. Oh, no, we're too slow to outspeed this Ghastly here by one point of speed. Are you kidding me? So here we can knock out the Ghastly. We paralyze it to two hitter from there. Out comes the Bayleaf, and I did not put on a berry. That was a mistake, and it looks like our tackles are doing about six damage per hit here. So that is effectively a nine hit KO with tackle. So I'm going to add on the swift TM right here and let's just see how that goes for us. One other possibility is to try to get some sort of paralysis with Thundershock on the Bayleaf. It's not super likely to come in, but if it does, then we could theoretically get an extra turn and maybe be able to get through that fight that way. So this time it is fully paralyzed and it missed a Razor Leaf. So we do knock out the Bay Leaf this time, but it comes down to basically using Thundershock after it uses Reflect, just trying to get the paralysis on it. And now we can learn the move Thunder Wave. I'm gonna just learn that over Growl here. And let's just see how this goes now. We're gonna Thundershock on the Zubat and we do knock it out. So we don't get access to Thunder Wave until we've already beaten the Bayleaf, but we need the Paralysis. So it's pretty luck based in order to get that. It is technically possible, but I don't know. That single miss from Razor Leaf might have been the entire difference in that fight. So Flaffy gets through, but it's really not good. And I see no way that Mareep is progressing here. We've got to test it either way, but I'm just going to probably count Mareep out pretty darn quickly. So here as we enter the Slowpoke well, I think this is one where we don't even mess around. I think we just throw on that Swift TM immediately. We already know that we're going to need it. So let's just add that move and try to make our way through this section. So here, let's just get into Bugsy's gym where I think we're fine against these randos. So we're just getting straight to the Bugsy fight itself. Now you may see that there's one optional battle there. What actually happened was I ran into a trainer while I was going back all the way to the beginning of the game to pick up some berries. And in doing so, I just decided to faint in that battle. I didn't gain any XP. We're still just a standard minimum battles Mareep here. 
But if you're just checking that and wondering, that's what happened. So here we are now against Bugsy. Let's just check the stats. We are at level 15 with 46 HP. Thundershock, Growl, Tackle, and Swift is our moveset. We have 22 attack, 22 defense, 29 special attack, 23 special defense, 21 speed. Let's see if we can just get through as easily as our evolved forms did. This one shouldn't be too bad, I don't think. So starting off against Bugsy, first attempt, I'm just going to hold down auto A on Thundershock this entire battle. But we can see it's a three hitter here on this Metapod. I'll just use Swift to finish it off. We do get to learn Thunder Wave now, though, because keep in mind, unevolved Pokemon tend to learn moves faster. So here we get Thunder Wave at level 16 as opposed to level 18. I'm going to learn this over Growl. Let's see if this helps us out. So now we can go for the Thundershock on Kakuna. It does look to be a two hitter right there. And out comes the Scyther. I'm just going to go all in on attack here. We're not going to mess with status. It looks like a three hitter here. But with the poison, we're just getting knocked out too quickly. Let's try this again. So this time we get to the Scyther without any poison. I'm even going to paralyze it once just so that we outspeed unless he uses quick attack. And that should buy us an extra turn just like it did right there. And we easily get through. So Thunder Wave makes a massive difference. And that could be the move that also allows us to be able to get through Rival 2. Since that Bayleaf? Yeah, it's scary, but if we can just Thunder Wave it and prevent it from being able to hit us first and get some turns where it doesn't move, we might just be able to get through this. So let's save the game, get into this fight, and try it out. So Rival 2 attempt number one, we're just going to go in on Thundershock here against the Ghastly. It is a two hitter and we get the paralysis there. Very nice. I'm going to go Thunder Wave first on Bayleaf as it did poison me here. But now we can go Swift strats. Swift did 14 damage there, so it should be a four hit KO. We did not put on a berry here, unfortunately, so we're going to lose the first attempt. He did also get that critical hit Razor Leaf that did a lot of damage. But here with the berry on, let's just try this again and see if this is, becomes more reasonable. So once again, we two shot the Ghastly. We get Razor Leaf turn one, but we've got a much better range as long as he doesn't get that critical hit. And we're going for Swift here. And now he reflects. When he reflects, I think we can just go like Thundershock. I'm not sure which move is actually stronger at this point, but we're really just hoping to get a bunch of misses until his reflect wears off. It wore off right there. And two more hits should allow us to knock it out, but he just barely takes us down. So the situation basically comes down to this. If we get Reflect, then we have to Thunder Wave, and the best case scenario is to use Thundershock here. Thundershock will actually do five damage, where Swift only does four damage. But then we have to consider how much we can actually take as far as damage from him when he's using Razor Leaf. On average, he's doing about 13 to 15 damage, depending on the ranges here. So usually by the time we get to the Bayleaf, we're a three or four hit KO. But after the berry, maybe we can last five hits. But in this case, when he uses Reflect, at least for the first five turns, we're going to get him down to about half health if we manage to hit him every single time. But even if he doesn't use Reflect, we're only doing seven damage per hit with the move Swift. And what that means is that this is a eight hit KO without Reflect setup. So the fact that we need so many turns, plus the fact that he would just have to be paralyzed or miss enough times to let us get that number of turns to knock him out is just completely unreasonable. So unfortunately, I think Mareep has to join the fail column. And with Mareep out of there, let's get to Growlithe. Let's see if it can find a way through this section. And then let's scout ahead a little bit with my Arcanine and just see what the next section has in store for us when we get to the Whitney part of the game. So here with Growlithe, the single biggest factor, of course, is that we are in the slow level up group. And whenever you're a slow level up Pokemon, you're just not going to get the levels that you need necessarily in order to take on major threats. So it might just end up getting completely wrecked in this section because it just doesn't have enough levels. I think Bugsy's going to be fine. It's really rival to where I'm scared. Bite should take care of Ghastly just fine, but if we don't outspeed against the Croconaw, we're not going to be able to just try to flinch it, and we're just really going to have to hope for some crazy luck, perhaps. We can learn Swift in this section, which could help us a little bit, but 
we're just definitely not going to have a massive amount of power as we go through this. So first things first, let's get into Slowpoke well and see if Bite is enough to get through these fights. Otherwise, we might just end up adding on Swift right here. With Bite, these Rattatas are three hit KOs and we're taking pretty massive damage. And keep in mind that Bite doesn't use our much stronger attack stat. That being said, we did just level up and learn Ember, which should be an immediate upgrade, but it's still a three hit KO here. So Swift is obviously a 60 base power move still, but it uses our attack stat, which is 20 as opposed to our special attack, which is only 18. So theoretically, we can do more damage here. We knock out the first Rattata. We're going to be able to heal up with a berry in the middle of this fight too. We get tail whipped there, but now we should get the auto heal and we knock out that trainer. We've also learned Ember now, so maybe this is gonna get smoother, but we're just gonna have to see. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that we can go for burns on opponents as a way to get extra damage, as well as to lower their attack stat. It's not really gonna help us on our toughest opponent though, which is Rival 2's Croconaw. So coming into the very last rocket, James Jr., we're going to just come in and start rocking with our Ember first. I think we wanna try to get a burn if we can here just because that will lower its attack a lot. And now we should pretty much have a guaranteed win. I think we can stick with moves like Ember and Bite here. I'm gonna go for Bite just because it also has the chance to flinch. So there we knocked that one out pretty darn easily. Let's make our way to Bugsy's gym, which should not be too hard. So it's straight to the Bugsy fight in this one. But just like that, we very easily get to Bugsy. Let's check the stats. We have a level 12 Growlithe, 39 HP. Swift, Roar, Bite, and Ember is the moveset. We've got 26 attack, 20 defense, 26 special attack, 21 special defense, and 23 speed. Let's just see if this is enough. So first off against the Metapod, I'm just gonna go Ember, obviously. It's gonna be a two hit KO, it looks like, but easy victory. Now we can move on to Scyther. He sends out second. Fury Cutter doesn't do that much but he is building it up. We get a burn there that's very nice, so that will cut his attack stat in half, but Fury Cutter almost knocks us out. We do manage to level up to level 13 though. We can use now Ember on the Kakuna. It goes Harden, and he just hands us the easy victory there. That was actually a lot closer than I thought it would be due to the Fury Cutter, but we did make it work. So here, let's just take our first try against rival number two. We're going to come in and start off by biting his Ghastly, which is a one hit KO. And now we have 27 speed and he has 27 speed. So this is a speed tie. We have a 50 50 chance of outspeeding. I'm going to roar at him. I'm going to get him to change his Pokemon. Now I think we can just go for some bite strats here to knock out this Zubat and then back to Croconaw. I don't know what else we could do other than just kind of hope for some crazy luck with bite flinches or something like that. But this is not looking great. So we can get the flinch sometimes. We're going to put a berry on here just to see if it helps to get through this. But otherwise, I mean, there's really nothing to do other than just to pray for tons of flinches. And I'm not sure that that's a reasonable strategy. So here we are getting crazy flinch luck, though. And if we can just win the speed tie, we do get through that Pokemon. Now the problem though, is that this Zubat is going to bite us and we can't do much. So we get a critical hit and it flinches there, but it lands the bite after surviving on one HP and knocks out our Growlithe. So that was insane luck and we still failed at the very end. I'm gonna give it a couple more tries, but if we can't get it, I think we're just gonna have to eliminate Growlithe. And yeah, it's pretty clear that without just insane luck, both winning the speed tie flips and getting flinches over and over on this Croconaw, there's just no reasonable way to get through this fight. Growlithe is just not Arcanine. It's not yet at that level. We got to give it a Firestone, guys. But uh, for this section, yeah, it's just out of there. So with that being done, there is one last test I'd like to do. This might just become a theme as long as Arcanine's still alive in this challenge, taking it to see what the next section has in store for us. Arcanine is my favorite Pokemon, so I do like to just give it a chance whenever I get the spot to do it. So let's just load up that Arcanine and scout ahead just a little bit. 
So obviously the first factor here is that we have to find a cut Pokemon in order to progress in the game. So we can come to Ilex Forest and we can run around looking for a Paris for a little while. And once I find one, I'm basically just going to use save states here in order to catch it. It's the only wild Pokemon that we should need to catch in this entire run, basically, because everything else is pretty much scripted. We should be able to get Pokemon to use the HM moves that we want as we go through the game. And here, once we get access to a Pokemon that can use the move cut, we're simply going to teach that move. Basically, Paris is available in this section. If we had thought ahead, we could have gotten a Sentret instead, but this is perfectly fine. But now, of course, we can get access to the move Headbutt, which can be useful for an awful lot of Pokemon in the next section, as well as getting access to an Aether right here, just in case we ever need it. We're probably going to save those PP restoration items for the late game. Over here, we can talk to this lady and get to the TM-12, which uh, can teach Sweet Scent. Not sure it's going to be particularly useful, but we may as well have it just in case. And then in this next section, we can simply skip everything on the way to Goldenrod City. Now in Goldenrod, of course, there are TMs available. We can buy things like the Elemental Punches. We can also come talk to this guy in order to get you know, the Spearow, just so that we have a flying Pokemon if we want to use one. And in this next route going north towards the National Park, there's yet again no required trainers. We do have to deal with a lot of spinning trainers right here that we're just going to have to route around, but they can be a little tedious to route around, but this is really the last spot where we're going to have major issues with spinners until basically when we get to Price's gym. The worst part, of course, is the double spinner right here. We're just going to have to go for it, basically. But once we get through, now we can go ahead and make it through to the National Park where we can get access to the Quick Claw, which is very useful in a lot of these runs. We can get TM28, which is the Dig TM. And here with decent routing, we can also get TM4 for rollout. And with that, we can get back to Goldenrod City, where there are a couple of optional trainers at this point, but technically they're required in the grand scheme of the game. We can come down into the underground and fight first this guy. You can actually go either route. There's this Pokemaniac Donald on the other side. There's another trainer. They both give exactly the same amount of XP. So technically you can fight either of them. I'm just going to take on Donald here since I'm not really too worried about these slow pokes. I think there's not really any reason to avoid this trainer. So we can simply just knock him out just like that. Next up, we actually have one more trainer here or who has some electric type Pokemon. I'm just going to go in and try with my moveset as is. Let's just see how this goes. So here we can one shot the Magnemite. Out comes his Voltorb next. We're simply just going to go with our flame wheel here too. I don't think there's any reason to change. Then he can send out the next Magnemite. We'll just sit here and flame wheel it to death. And one more. This should be another easy KO. But just like that, we have gotten through all of those Pokemon. No problems. Now we can get a haircut down here. We can buy herbal medicine, but we can also grab the coin case. We can also pick up some things at the Goldenrod Game Corner as well. Things like an Abra if we really want one, or if we really got crazy here, it might be possible to get something like a TM, though we would need a lot of coins to do so. A lot of trainers in here, but we don't actually have to fight them all. This trainer is completely skippable. As is Cat Lady over here, we can just go right by. So the first trainer that we actually have to fight is this Snubble trainer. So we're just going to come into this fight, I think, and go Flame Wheel. This is probably the best strategy. We get licked, but who cares? Easy two hit KO here with our Arcanine Henry. We get to skip this girl just down below us as well. It's just straight on to Whitney. The question is, can we get through the Whitney fight? So here, first things first, I'm go just going to go Flame Wheel here. I think this is the best strategy. We get Double Slapped, which did decent damage here. So I'm not sure if we're getting through this one. Now, out comes the Mill Tank. It's definitely going to go for Rollout here, I think. And we're kind of hoping to burn it. We get the burn right there. And of course, we get to heal off of that. So we're just kind of hoping that maybe she misses here. She is faster than us. So this is a situation where on the one hand, maybe something like the Quick Claw could become really useful or it could just come down to getting a critical hit here after getting the burn. So there she misses rollout the second turn and we get a critical hit. So we beat her on the second attempt. <laughs> 
<laughs> so there we go. Yes, my legendary, absolutely legendary Pokemon, of course, Arcanine. Here she doesn't even want to give us access to our our badge because she's so angry that we just beat her with a an Arcanine named Henry. I know people are going to be like, why is it named Henry, Teo? Henry was the name of my dog when I was a kid. My mom was weird. She she named the the male dog Henry and the female dog Etta so that she could just yell Henrietta and have them both come. <laughs> oh, my mom is just a legend. Uh, anyway, just saying, uh, Henry, he was the German Shepherd that I had as a kid. So we're going to run through the entire game, hopefully with Henry. I think he's going to be legendary. But there we go. Three badges down with Arcanine. We've scouted the next section. If I missed anything, tell me in the comments below. Uh, I'm always interested to learn new things as I go through these sections. But with that, let's just finish up, see the results so far, and who we're running next time. So this week is turning out to be a really long episode. We did basically over 20 Pokemon in this one. We're going to pull back just a little bit next time. We're going to do 16. I figured I'd do a longer episode since you guys have waited so long between videos. But next time, 16 challengers are coming in. Before we check that, let's check the results so far. Up through this point, 50 Pokemon have passed through Rival 2 and Bugsy. We've also managed to get through with all of the channel member picks that we've done so far. Granted, some of them needed a lot more help than others, but hey, we're making progress and 22 Pokemon have failed up to this point. I think a lot of these Pokemon make perfect sense. You know, of course, the grass types we would have expected to completely get wrecked. But I'm also kind of surprised to see we're dropping off some of these electric types as we go through. Also, some really, really strong Pokemon are just starting to hit walls and not be able to progress in the game. Now, you may recognize some of those Pokemon in the fail column as the ones that we just did the Faulkner Maximum Battles series with, though, however. So we can actually knock off quite a few Pokemon like Caterpie, Pokemon like Magikarp, Pokemon like Jolteon were all part of the April Fool's video. But that was a pretty interesting video when you get down to it, because we did find some interesting factors when it comes to fighting all of the available trainers in the game. So I'll just leave a link to that in the description below. Go check it out if you didn't see it. For next time's challengers, we have a very interesting group coming in. We are going to be doing the entire Poliwag line as well as Politoed. So Politoed versus Poliwrath, it's always very interesting to see. We are then going to get Kadabra and Alakazam. We're going to get the entire Machop line. Victory Bell is going to make an appearance. Then Tentacool, Tentacruel, and the Graveler and Golem. We have Rapidash coming in and finally a Murkrow. I'm very interested to hear how many of these Pokemon you think are going to get through the next section. If I have to make my own predictions, I'm going to definitely say that the Psychic types get through this section. I just don't see any way that they have any trouble here. I also think that Pokemon like Tentacruel are going to be pretty good here. Really good stats and not actually having a major type weakness since grass is only neutrally effective should be pretty darn good. As usual, I would expect that a flying type like Murkrow should be able to find a way through this section as well as the fighting types. They don't really have that much to worry about as long as they can deal damage to a ghost type Pokemon. That being said, Pokemon like Victory Bell, Pokemon like Golem even, might just hit a wall here. This could be a massive challenge when we get to Rival 2. And we don't really know for sure how we're going to do with these water types. Of course, we can get moves like Hypnosis with a Poliwag, I believe. But will it be enough? Will we have enough speed or will we just get one shot by the opposing Bayleaf? Place your own comments and predictions below. With that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.